Hey guys, Rivers here with Tech Connect, and today I want to take a look at the Sony AX53 4K camera. I've been using this camera for a couple weeks now, and I've actually been using the earlier versions of this camera for a couple of years, so I'm pretty familiar with it. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to take a look at the camera. We'll do a couple comparisons to the older versions, and I'll show you some of the features. So let's go ahead and take a look. So one of the main features of the camera is what's called balanced optical steady shot. And that's where the imaging block inside floats separately from the body. So you can see if you move the body around, the inside, the optical block, the lens will be moving separately from the outside of the camera. And what this does is it makes the video much more stable. Uh, a lot less shaky if you're moving around or if you're zoomed in really far. It helps quite a bit, especially for handheld. So, and I've used quite a few different cameras. I think Sony does the best job of this. And this moves more than just an image sensor shift. If you look at it, you can see that the whole lens and everything is moving around. And this stabilization has been improved a little bit. I've used the older cameras and this one's a little bit more stable and especially for longer zooms because this guy has 20X zoom versus last year's model with 10X zoom. So probably the biggest improvement over last year is the image sensor in here. It's now a 9x16 sensor instead of a 4x3 sensor, and it's got larger pixels. They're about 60% larger than last year's. What that means is better low light performance, but also I've noticed that the image quality is just better all around. So I think they've redesigned the sensor to be a little bit more efficient. So if you were to take a frame out of the video footage and look at it, it looks just like a photograph. There's no grain or static look to it. It's just smooth, just like off a camera, like a DSLR. Okay, and the next thing that has been improved on here is the microphone. It's a 5.1 channel surround sound microphone, same as last year, but it's a new mic and it's supposed to have better directional sound. Um, so if you have a surround sound system, it should work really well for you. The next improvement is the LCD screen, and this year they're using an extra white pixel in the screen, and I've noticed it looks much brighter and actually a lot easier to see what's in the screen. So definitely improvement there. Even outside it looks a little bit better. The only downside is to, it's a touch screen, which it was last year, but it's harder to touch the buttons. I've had a few times where I had to push it like three times before it will go, and that might just be me getting used to the screen or maybe they wanted to make it a little bit harder so people don't accidentally press something, but to me that was a little bit of a headache. Okay, another improvement actually, if you've used these uh, previous AX33 and some of the earlier ones, the zoom was a little bit too touchy and uh, it was hard to get that slow zoom sometimes you want, it was just like either all on or all off. They fixed this, it's quite a bit better than it has been, it's still not perfect, but if you move it just a little bit, it'll slowly zoom, if you move it more, it'll zoom faster, and if you move it all the way, it'll zoom really fast. So it's much better than it has been on any of the other models that I've used. Okay, another thing the camera does is it does time-lapse and slow motion, which it didn't do that in the previous versions. Time-lapse, it just takes photos and then you can stitch them together later in software, and I did one. It looks really good, but I like the idea of the camera just putting it into a video for me, not having to stitch them all together. Now the slow motion on their hand is really good. It's full HD at 180 frames per second, and the image quality looks just like it does at 60. It's excellent. I've seen some cameras when you go to slow motion, the image quality doesn't look anywhere near as good. This one, it looks great at 180 frames per second. And I know 240 frames a second is kind of the sweet spot, but you can slow it down in software like Adobe Premiere or uh, use a plugin like Twixter and get really slow video out of it. And since the quality is good, that should get you to where you want to be with that 240 frames looking video. Okay, the next feature is the zoom lens. Last year it was a 10x optical, this year it's a 20x optical, and it actually will go up to 30x with their clear zoom, which is basically cropping it down on the sensor, but they've moved this feature down from the higher end cameras, like the Sony FS5 is doing it, and I saw people who are in broadcast say that it's so good they would actually use it in broadcasts. Next up, this can be remote controlled with a phone using the Sony software app and I connected it up, uh, it just took a picture of the on-screen barcode and it connected immediately to my phone. So it was much easier than having to link up through the network or anything like that. And then when you get in there, you can see what your camera sees, which is really nice, and then you can start recording, stop recording, and zoom in, zoom out. Maybe they'll add some more features in later software updates, but right now that's all it does. You can't go into the advanced settings on there. Some of the features that they kept from last year that I love are this manual mode button here. So you push this button once, and I've got it set to exposure, then you can use this lens ring to adjust the exposure, 
or you can hold down on this manual mode button and then it'll give you all a bunch of different options that you can set onto this lens ring. So you can set focus, white balance, uh, exposure, you can set uh, shutter speed, just there's about tw about 10 different things you can set in there and then you just press it again and then that new setting is set onto the lens ring. Press it again, it goes back to auto mode. So it works really slick. Probably my favorite feature on the camera other than the image quality itself. Another thing they changed on here is last year you had a full size USB port right here. So you, that way when you're traveling you can just plug it into a computer. But I think micro USB cables have become so common like every Android phone has one now that they're just like easy to get. So now they have the micro USB port here which will charge it and you can do your data transfer from here. You've also got your microphone jack right here and over here you've got a headphone jack so you can listen to the audio that's being recorded on your camera as well. One other feature that's been improved over last year is the battery life on this guy. It seems to be much better than the AX33. I got it's saying about an hour and 45 minutes on this battery which is really good compared to last year's. Also, you can get these batteries, uh, aftermarket batteries, like this one's made by Optica, and it's less than $20, and this thing will last like several hours. Highly recommend one of these. I'll put a link to it in the video description down below, but it's a little bit bigger here, you can see, but highly worth it. I got a couple of these, and they've lasted for years. They're great. I went on a vacation last week to California, and I got a bunch of test footage on this camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it up next. It's all in 4K, so you can check it out in 4K or 1080p. It looks really nice and I tried to cover all the different features that the camera does. So tell me what you think in the description down below. All right guys, thanks for watching my review of the Sony AX53 4K camcorder. If you liked this video and wanna see more like it, be sure and hit that subscribe button down there. That way you'll see my videos whenever they come out. Also, I've shot this whole part right here with me and camera on the new Sony A6300 in 4K. So I'll have a link to that camera and the AX53 in the video description down below. Thanks again for watching and as always, aloha.